Howdy, everybody. I know, I know. Thank you. Thank you. I, know I, deserve, I deserve all of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Ham Radio's Cafe Noir. This is our Thursday night after dark show where we talk about topics that we can't talk about on normal ham radio. Whatever that happens to be tonight. Tonight really isn't one of those nights. We're going to talk about the ARRL, the American Radio Relay League's Volunteer on the Air program. The year of the volunteer, 2023. And I don't know anything about it. I asked Chuck if he knew about it. Would you say, Chuck? I don't know what I said. Chuck doesn't even know what I'm talking about right now, let alone when I asked him the question about volunteers. Oh, I hit something here. Sorry. (laughs) I asked Abe. Abe didn't know about it. Abe, what did you say? (laughs) Well, I knew that there was a rotation of folks across the U.S. who were operating under the call sign of W1AW stroke something, and uh, that, that's about it. That, that's that's more than Chuck knew. And then <laughs> Jim saw your joking, Voda man. on FT8. I was. It's okay. It's good. Uh, yeah, I've been, right along. I've been hitting up Voda on FT8 a bunch because I thought, well, I don't know. It's something on the air. So after I struck out three times, I wasn't about to call it quits. I decided that I was going to reach out to our good friends over at the ARRL and see what they actually knew about their own program. And they said, we'd love to talk about it. And they volunteered Bob. So speaking of volunteer of the year, Bob, how are you doing? I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty well tonight. Good. How about, good. How about good. you fellas? Good. Just fine. We're doing awesome, man. All right. Yeah. My lighting is a bit bright, but uh, Bob, take it away. Tell us, tell us what what we can expect, what we can do, how we can help, all that jazz. That's brighter. Well, um, you know, um, part of uh, the AWRL's operation is to get everyone who's a member involved in doing something, and uh, a lot of po- folks uh, give a lot of their time uh, volunteering to serve in various capacities. And we decided that it was uh, about time that we uh, have a um, universal event for all members to participate in and celebrate uh, the volunteer spirit. And uh, that's our theme for 2023. And we have a a year long on the air event. uh, That's VOTA, uh, Volunteers on the Air. And um, the whole idea is just for AWRL members to get on the air, um, say hello to each other, and uh, have some fun doing it. And uh, we've got, um, uh, I think, close to 2 million QSOs oh, wow. Uh, wow. in the system already. Very good. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's incredible uh, how much is going on. And all of this is uh, being done where no one has to submit a log at all, um, other than to Logbook of the World, which most people use anyway. So um, it's a uh, it's an automatic thing. Uh, any contact with um, at least one uh, AWRL member involved can produce points, and um, so it's uh, it's an opportunity for everybody to just get on the air, have some fun, and it's emulating uh, what we did for the centennial. Uh, back in 2014, which was a uh, huge success. And um, it utilizes the same basic um, theme. And uh, uh, this time around, we've we've added a few new uh, twists to it. Uh, We're going to have automatic uh, Worked All States Awards. As soon as you're eligible for a Worked All States Award, you just click on the link and it'll print one out for you. Um, and, and that this kind is of automatic thing. for the W1AW station, or is it automatic for like W1AW slash oh, six? It's automatic for for KN4YCD. Uh, if and he uploads the logbook well, of the world. I do. If he, it, that's right. If, and if he works oh, all okay. 50 states, yeah. That's now, the, it should be. That's a good idea. The uh, the W1AW stations are just a, uh, I guess, a, a special feature, if you will, um, where they're not required but they're, they're just adding another facet to this uh, this game of uh, getting on the air and giving uh, the, the volunteers again out in the field an opportunity to operate as w1aw and be the subject of a pileup and uh, it's uh, it's going very very well that would be fun <laughs> it is 
I have um, never been the subject of a pileup. Well, there was that time in high school, but that was another thing. <laughs> that was a pylon, wasn't it? I believe so. <laughs> Whether you're the winner or the loser as to how that they, is. They didn't like out. the band kid on the football team. So the band kid said, you know what? Screw you guys going home. <laughs> you were spying, man. And that's why they didn't win the trophy that year. I, I don't remember if they did or not. I had to go to every football game anyway, so it didn't matter to right. me. Right. Go go team. I can see that band spirit right there. Oop. And there's girls in band. There ain't no girls on the football team. I could be on the cam, Mike. I don't know. So So uh, how does how does one uh get get on the list to be a W one A W station? Oh well that's um there there are state coordinators. Thanks, Dave. Uh, that um um each uh each state has a coordinator that's appointed by the section managers as appropriate for your state and uh, those people can be contacted and uh, you can uh, register and uh, get a, a time slot where you can operate on your favorite band uh, for a period of time perhaps uh, and operate as w1aw slash whatever your call area is and um, that's awesome yeah so, so the state coordinator that's a, a how do they decide Do you just say, Hey, I want to do it. And um, they've been, you know, polling the, the people in their areas to, to get people to, to, to volunteer. Okay. Um, you know, there's obviously there are people who want to do this sort of thing, but there's other people who have never even considered it. So they're, uh, they're reaching out through clubs and, uh, all of the, uh, communication methods in the, uh, uh, sections. Uh, and the states to uh, reach out to the people there and uh, bring them in and offer them an opportunity. Very cool. Yeah, it is. And uh, everybody seems to be really uh, thoroughly enjoying it. And uh, uh, we have uh, uh, many, many, many people involved in this. Um, the states are coordinating and they have dozens of people uh, operating in all different counties, grid squares, uh, and towns in all the different states. And, um, you know, so the, uh, coverage of our, uh, of the country is, uh, is pretty comprehensive. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So now if you don't, if you're not associated with a club, cause I haven't, I haven't seen anything in email from ARRL that I remember talking about it. I don't remember. Um, how would you find out about the program and who to contact and say, Hey, I'll, you know, I'd love to do it kind of thing. Well, I, um, I'm not in a club. I, I ain't got yeah. no time for clubs. So I don't, I don't, <laughs> club. I hear you. You're in the I, toads club. Uh, well, Jim, I mean, I, that's I the you. double secret special club, but yeah, that's the only one. Um, well, um, Every uh, every time the uh, that that we send out our uh, weekly uh, newsletter, there's uh, there's a blurb in there um, about about Voda um, and okay. who to reach out to. Um, in every issue of QST is the listing of section managers and uh, division managers, um, and you can reach out to any of them. Okay, uh, it's usually their call sign at ARRL.org and um, they can uh, either uh, connect you directly with the uh, uh, the coordinator for the state or uh, refer you to them. Now, Bob, I have a question specifically about it. I, I'm kind of interested in volunteering for that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't learn not to do that in the military, unfortunately. But, <laughs> right. Uh, um, yeah, they didn't beat that out of me. So what are there any requirements if someone wants to volunteer if they get a hold of their coordinator and, and want to volunteer i mean it's like you need to have a minimum 100 watts or you have to have full legal well, power in a directional yagi or um well i mean you know there, there's some practical um you know i things I, I guess we could point out you know like what you just described would be an ideal uh you know candidate you know somebody with uh, legal limit power and a big antenna is going to be heard. And, uh, you know, if you have a station that's not so good, may maybe that's, you know, you're not going to want to ask for 
you know, 20 sideband on a Saturday afternoon. Right. Um, you know, you may want to do um, maybe 40 meter FT8 on a Saturday afternoon, mm -hmm. um, you know, where, you know, your um, station might be more effective in that type of an environment. And there's uh, uh, an, one of the twists, um, the way that uh, we're running this one is that the, um, oh, there's my, that's my sheet. Wonderful. <laughs> um, I, I actually maintain that. Um, and that's the listing of all the operations. Uh, you see that the first week of the year, we didn't have um, a state active with W1AW. And then some weeks we have more than one. Um, but um, the uh, uh, opportunities are great in that you can work each station three times per band, once on CW, once on a digital mode, that is any digital mode, and then a third time on phone, any voice mode. So, um, uh, you know, you could work W1AW stroke six on, uh, on 20 meter uh, FT8, 20 meter CW, and 20 meter sideband. So you oh. get three, three contacts with that station on one band. So they're and, not hung up specifically on FT8 then. If I wanted to do PSK31 or Hellschreiber or one of those other 87 weird modes. Jim is a big fan of Hell. Right, go for it. Sweet. I mean, ACDC wrote that song about me, I'm just saying. So. How long is this going to go on for? Because it looks like it runs through the whole calendar year. Is it going to go into 2024? Um, through December 31st. Gotcha. Yeah, it's the year, old year 2023. And um, I, I probably know more about uh, Highway to Hell and ACDC than you guys do. So <laughs> no, let's, no, let's roll. Mm. No, 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 no. Bob's I mean, in a I biker look a gang. I younger than I am, Bob. I know. Stunning. Bob's in, Bob's in a biker gang, the Iron Butts, right? I, I, mean, I looked that up on you. Oh, that's right. <laughs> no, I've been around. I think Chuck's in that, too. Yeah. I met Van Halen before they were cool back in the 80s. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, really? okay. So that's very cool. So go back to the spreadsheet. Are there any uh, I, was, I thought we were going to talk about music. <laughs> I, I, well, we can. Okay. Let me ask you this. Okay. We had we had a bit of a dust up in our Discord oh, server yeah. this afternoon. It got, it got hot and heavy. Ooh, One wow. of the unwashed heathens in there, the Philistine, Ron... N A C W R. I probably got his call w sign back. W C R. W C R. Whatever. He's a Philistine. He said the Eagles <laughs> weren't any is. good and that Peter Gabriel was. And I said, "Son, Ooh, that's <laughs> blasphemy. You are high." Mm -hmm. Eagles were my first concert, actually. If I played the Eagles oh. in my car and there's a girl in my car, mm-hmm. She's, just, uh -huh. she's getting out. She's getting out and calling the cops. No, no, <laughs> yeah, no. Because then I'm going to turn on Barry White in a few minutes. He's like, put your, put the your Eagles was oh. my warm up band. <laughs> well, that's that's when when you you got to prove why so you dark. were in the marching band. That's right. <laughs> yep. I just that's listened right. to six hours yeah. of good old rock. So, yeah. I love. What well, instrument did rock. you play, Jim? Huh? What instrument did you play in the marching the flute, band? The flute, trumpet. The, the oh, trumpet. That's right. <laughs> Now I saw know. one of the Eagles in concert uh, probably about five to ten years ago. I can't remember which one it was, but I had a great time. Yeah. Well, our band. brother, WB6ACU, is, um, you know, one of the one of the lead guitar players, you know, Joe Walsh. Yeah, sir. So, um, well. you know, the Eagles are, are uh, you know, pretty high ranking, if you ask me. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the genre is totally different, uh, you know, comparing them to any any really metal band you know well i mean uh, i have i have a, i mean i'm a huge sabbath fan right yep. oh, yeah. ape likes that new heavy metal like i mean he's an iron maiden guy and i like iron maiden okay but i mm. really like sabbath <laughs> yeah but i mean classic rock is just great and i i will agree the eagles are a little bit i mean hotel california is the best song it's in my top no. three of all time classic rock songs ever in the yeah. history of ever. Well, the Eagles had a record that was the Eagles' greatest hits, I believe, is the number one selling record of all time. I, Michael I Jackson might have beaten him out at some point, but I, I know that. Really? Yeah. I'm a Queen fan, actually. And I love Queen. A, oh, Queen is awesome. Ooh. Queen is. It was Don yeah. Henley I saw in concert. Wow. Oh, yep. Yeah. yeah, Queen is outstanding. They were great. Freddie oh. Mercury was ugly as hell, but 
that weirdo could sing. Like no, I, I think that he was the best rock vocalist Amen. to ever live. Yeah, yeah. One, one of the top three for sure. Yeah. Best yeah. showman there was. I saw him and Michael Jackson probably two of the best showmen, maybe. Yeah, and people might argue with Michael. And if any well, of you youngins really don't know about Queen, go well, go on rock, YouTube right. and look up the Live Aid Queen performance, and then you can thank me. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thank him. Send him a personal email. <laughs> on a QSL card. The smoking ape at <laughs> not gonna answer you dot org. <laughs> I don't know, they're saying the hoodie and the blowfish had the highest <laughs> just looking at Oh man. Somebody's talking crazy. Twenty one times platinum, man. I normally stay quiet, but hey who hootie and the blowfish. Hootie and the blowfish. I just looked at it. Up. Whoever said that, let Google you're, gonna get back, you're getting you're getting to put in time out. We we might have to call Ham Court for <laughs> Or Harris, Chuck that said it, so I put him in timeout. <laughs> Have you guys seen the um, California there. Jam uh, videos from back in the uh, late seventies? No, uh, actually, mm -hmm. Eagles are um, up there. I think I might have. I don't. I don't it, remember you, it specifically. It, it's, on, it's on the internet, of course. Yeah. So uh, just Google it up, and uh, California Jam, Black Sabbath appeared on it. Great. It was unbelievable. I mean, oh, there yeah. was like a half a million people, um, and and Ozzy was just going nuts, and uh, it's it's a great show. Ozzy is, Ozzy is just Ozzy. Yeah. The the, and, the uh, bass player from Primus used to work for me as a kid. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's considered the best bass player in the world right now. I think. Are we or, talking or about was. Claypool? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, Claypool. Yeah. 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 Very very intelligent young man. Mm -hmm. Um. So, on is there any Alabama? What is that list of the? Um, this is a weekly schedule. The schedule is Alabama listed at all in there so far? Um, if you click up at the top, you'll see. You click the, where the state list. Just make that Alabama. There it is. Filter it, and it'll, it'll pop right up at the top. Up, oh, they're all full. Sorry, Jim. No, no, that, was, uh, that just means there's a coordinator. Um, so there's two, it, Jim, one's in June and one's in October. And uh, it looks like uh, Larry, K4AB, is the uh, coordinator. So uh, reach out to him and, uh, yeah. you know, uh, let him know you want to uh, get involved. Sweet. They'll, they'll hook you up with either a group that's already uh, planning it or uh, give you a, a, some schedule opportunities. And that what we just looked at here for Alabama, this is true for all the states. And by the way, there are always two opportunities, and we try to separate them. Um, this is so not only participants in the state have two opportunities to be active, but it's so people everywhere else will have two separate opportunities to work the state. And um, so, um, you know, two opportunities, W1AW slash four, uh, will be in Alabama. And uh, so anybody needing um, Alabama for a W1AW special uh, VOTA Worked All States Award, um, keep, keep looking. Hmm. Coming up in June and October. I worked a bunch of those guys, actually, to tell you the truth. I got the, the guy in Hawaii was just booming. Of course, he's just... Not too far from me. Yeah. There we go. That's right. Turn it up now. Tween it up. Tween it up. Yep. That wasn't supposed to be on the record. He couldn't. Um, oh, Donnie couldn't hear. Or Ronnie couldn't hear it. I'll get the right Van Zant in a second. Ronnie couldn't hear it. That's why he said turn it up. But they ended up leaving it on the recording. That's the way he said it, man. Perfect. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, listen, we got to hurry up and just settle some arguments here because the hootie and the blowfish conversation has me trapped. Oh, I, okay. I re looked it up. Are I re looked it up. It was the Eagles. You were right. So, it was the so Eagles. So, Eagles at 38, and, and uh, somebody was saying Dark Side of the Moon. I believe his name is Mike K at MRD. Yeah. I would have thought he would have known a little bit more about music being the world's okayest guitar player, but you're wrong, well, son. It depends, on, it depends well, on who votes for it because certain that. people Fleetwood would vote Mac. that Dark of the Moon. Fleetwood, this I'm is certified Floyd's record higher, sales. Honestly, Zeppelin What's, absolutely believe that. 
so when we come down here to 10 to 14 million copies, which is less than half of what the Eagle sold, there's Hootie and the Blowfish in there. I mean, where's ABBA on that list? Probably above Hootie and the Blowfish, <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I don't know. Mm. See, look, huh. Eagles have the top, in, in the top three, Eagles have two of the top three. How can you be in two? Oh, two different They got albums? the greatest hits, and then they got oh. Back in Black. And then, uh, no, that's... I'm <laughs> sorry, Hill to a California. <laughs> All right, listen, I'm putting them on. I'm putting I'm, them on. Do it. All right. Do, okay, there we go. Oh, there you go. It's Hotel California. <laughs> oh, nice. Hotel. Yo, that hotel. was great. I am, I'm, so I'm looking at that 15 to 19 million, and I see GNR up there at the top above Springsteen, and I see mm. Boston on there. Here we go. Man. I'm a huge Pink Floyd fan, by the way. I oh, love hell them. Yeah. Here, here oh, they are down too. here at 11 and a half million is the first time that they pop up on the screen. Wow. If I have. If Here's I only Eagles have again. three songs to listen to the rest of my life, it would be Hotel California, um, Comfortably Numb, and Free Bird. Done. And I love somehow Queen, I, too. Somehow I'm I knew sorry. Free Bird. Hmm? Somehow but you wouldn't I knew pick, it was going to be Free Bird. In your eyes, by Peter Gabriel? No. That's no. my favorite. I would poke my ear. I'd poke my eardrums out with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I actually got to see... Uh, Paul McCartney and Wings in concert in outside in Berkeley, and it was pretty awesome. Did he, did he by, do band by the on college? The run? No, he did "Living That Die," and they just like it just ended, and it was like it almost made your ears go, it almost made your ears bust when they cut the music off. It was pretty. "Living cool. Let Die" was a great song, and yeah. so was "Band on the Run." I, I saw Paul McCartney at an HP conference, and yeah. um, HP had redone all of his digital media and stuff like that, and they put on a fantastic like media display as he, as he was in between songs and stuff like that. I just like nice. pictures of him, the Beatles, and and uh, all the stuff. It, it was just it was really cool. I guess I was a big Beatles fan growing up. I was never. I, I don't I mind some of, of their band. old original albums, but when they got into the hippie, Ravi Shrankar, psychedelic junk, I like the Yellow Submarine. Yeah. That one? Yeah. No. Magical Mystery Tour, whatever. No. I don't care. So I've managed to see... I haven't seen Black Sabbath in concert. I never got to see them. I got to see Skinnerd, the original Skinnerd, not the not the VAR Skinnerd, but the OEM Skinnerd. And I got to see Olivia Newton-John. Oh. Whatever. But she's smoking hot, okay? Mm -hmm. God rest her soul. Yes, she is. I was. Smoking <laughs> hot. Um... Ario Speenwagon, Styx, Springsteen. Uh, I think there was one other one. I can't remember who. But probably my favorite one was Skinner. Springsteen Steve, put on a great show. I saw Stevie Nicks at, at the height of her career. That was pretty nice. Mm. She yeah, might be at the height of her too. career now. She's got a tremendous comeback after putting a book out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stevie mm -hmm. Nicks' best video was the Tusk video at filmed at USC. Because mm -hmm. Stevie Nicks was at her extra smoking awesomeness then. <laughs> now she looks like my grandma. Awesome. But, you know. Dang, that's some Blue grandma. Dang, you're, yeah, your grandma. <laughs> Hotness runs in my family, man. What can I say? Oh, okay. <laughs> this comes from somewhere. <laughs> from everybody else, though. Right? Right, <laughs> right this skip, skip, skip Jim's generation. Yeah. <laughs> Mine, too. Heart, heart. That's yeah, the other one I saw. Old. They were oh, here in Montgomery. Oh. oh, yeah. Now there, there is a unreal female voice. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. That was. I saw them here in eighty. Perfect. That was before I was married to plaintiff number one. So that was like eighty five. They performed here in Montgomery, which is pretty amazing. And that place was wall to wall. They were great. Look, they're asking him, Radio DX, my good friend Hayden. He wants to ask a serious question. He wants to know who our favorite current day singer is born after 1990. And that's easy, Shakira. She is born before 1990, though, buddy. No way. Yeah. Just got all the like, digits. No. <laughs> if I had to pick two singers born that are were current in like early 2000s, it would be Britney. Sorry. I like her music a little bit. She's and Shakira. Hot. And Shakira, because both of them are hot as fire back in the day. Britney's a little crazy. On Hot Crazy Matrix, she's in the crazy part. But <laughs> but they were not born after 1990. Britney was like 16 in 2000, so she was not born in 1990. And, and Shakira might be is like right. the same age. I, I can honestly say that I'm probably not aware of any singers that were born <laughs> after 1990. Right. 
And if any of you put Justin Bieber as a serious comment in the chat, <laughs> you are banned for the rest of eternity. For life. For life. All right. With Tell prejudice. Him, Jim, you, know, you love him, you know. Okay, Gaga. Gaga can sing. She's gotten a little less weird in the last few years. I saw her in American Horror Story. She played a great vampire thing. And the woman can sing. She did a duet with Tony Bennett, uh, The Lady is a Tramp, that was smoking. It's awesome. Agreed. And I don't know who Dua Lipa is. I don't know what that is. It's something you kids listen to. So Mike, I, got I know you're trolling, Mike. Mike is trolling. <laughs> I got, I got, I got Bob's uh, QRZ page up. Look, look at the guns on this guy right here. I don't mess with him. I know it's a little bit oh. of an older picture. Yeah, that that is an older picture. That's actually at the um, NN. Was it NN three SI at the Smithsonian? Uh, mm. I was I was operating that station there um, oh, about thirty years ago, I guess. And um, it's not there anymore. Um, now that's not a Marlboro you're holding. That's a big pen, right? That is correct. Okay. There's no smoking in the Smithsonian. <laughs> well, with, with with arms like that, you smoke anywhere you want. I'd imagine. Eh, yeah, <laughs> that was that was quite a while ago. This is you and uh, Friedrich Chauvin. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, Eric Swartz from Ellicraft. Yeah, Eric. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's this was Eric uh, here. a few oh, years ago. Let's see, and then uh, down here, that's, that's out your office ah, window, right? That's the real W1AW. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the view out of my uh, my office at the headquarters building. Across and then the here you are on the, on the motorcycles. Yeah, that's right. Oh, a little adventure bike there. Oh, huh? Devil's Tower. Yep. That's all. I've never been there. I want to go there. Well, oh, they claim that that's a portal to space. Free stump. Shh, well, you, don't you know talk the, about the, that in public. It, it may be, but... They're actually common up there. Um, it's uh, it's one of the larger ones, but they uh, they're all over. Uh, you know the the landscape up there in w- Wyoming. And, that's a uh, table mesa, is what that's called. Is that right? I, I, I believe that's correct. Yeah. 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 Well, I, when I was there, at this these these photos are from, gosh, almost twenty years ago. Now this but. Um... What is it? The broken spoke. That's not where they have the, the the toe inside the whiskey bottle. Everybody's got to do a shot out of, is it? What? Oh, that I don't know. But that <laughs> that's actually in uh, Sturgis, uh, South Dakota. I stopped there on that that trip. I was on a uh, oh I don't know I guess about a five thousand mile uh, trip from Dallas up to Spokane, Washington, uh, around the uh, uh, you know central northwest area, and uh, went to uh, you know, Mount Rushmore and, um, you know, of course, Devil's Tower here and um, the uh, Crazy Horse Memorial. That's a great place to go to. It's very close to uh, uh, Mount Rushmore. If you ever mm-hmm. get up there, uh, you know, you got to hit both of them. And now, uh, is that close yeah. to uh, the Little Bighorn up that way? I don't know. Because I think it's in South Dakota. Yeah. Well, that looks like a fancy bike right there. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I traded in the uh, the uh, quote dirt bike for the uh, street bike. What dirt bike was that? Was that a, that wasn't a Beamer, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it was can, a, oh, what is it? That was a uh, 1999 R1100 GS. Mm. Yep. And this is a uh, K1300 GT. That's a pretty bike right there. I had a Goldwing. Oh man. Back in the day, I miss my Goldwing sometimes. Yeah, yeah I'm not. I haven't been riding in a few years, and uh, one of these days I might start again. But I've been uh, traveling around in airplanes too much, so don't have a lot of time for it. Only have time for two expensive hobbies: ham radio and. <laughs> right. Are you going to be uh, um, at Xenia this year? Uh, for me, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I've uh, been going to uh, Dayton uh, pretty much every year since uh, 1980, oh, wow. even when I Dang. wasn't working in the business. But uh, um, yeah, it's a great thing to do. And if you haven't been there, I highly recommend it. I think we're planning a little something. Uh, T.O. and I, we were down at um, 
Orlando just a few weeks back. And uh, that was that was a pretty good time. T.O. being who? Who's that? The guy immediately to your other <laughs> to your left or right, depending upon. Oh, which okay. Way. <laughs> I don't know because there's there's like about six guys in Florida with uh, call signs that are T.O. So I didn't. Oh, gotcha. okay. I wasn't sure who you're talking about. Temporarily, they're, they're working you too hard over at the league. They won't let you watch YouTube too much. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I drop I one in the chat if you're going to be at uh, Hamvention, y'all. Let's see how many of our crowd is going to be there. One for me, unless I get COVID again. Yeah, pretty likely. <laughs> yeah, make sure you wash your hands after the show, Bob. Uh, Jim has had COVID five times. <laughs> four, and, only uh, four. That we know of. <laughs> when, when anybody oh, was a sick. false negative. <laughs> what? I don't want to see all these zeros. Kevin, that's False like right media. next door for you. How far are you from um, Xenia, Kevin? What part of Indiana? Hayden are you says in? he's not going. That's crazy. It's oh, an easy trip for him. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Just a little swim. Wow, not many. Vern will be there, my man. All right, Kathy will be there. Well, Kathy, I know you're going to be there. <laughs> is is there anything that, that we're missing she just on this? To let uh, you know on this Voda stuff. Am I, am I missing anything else here? Yeah, Bob. Bob. Yeah. Um, is is there anything else you're missing? Yeah, well, is there anything else um, we wanted to cover? Well, I, I think there's uh, there's a few functions that are available on the web page um, that people will want to uh, look at. Um, one is the uh, the leaderboard, which is oh uh, about oh, ninety yeah. percent complete now, and um, it's uh, going to be. Um, uh, filterable kind of the way you pulled up Alabama on its mm -hmm. own. Uh, if you want to take a look at scores, uh, your own score, other people's scores, that kind of thing. Their scores. And, uh, this, yeah, this is a, a year long. You want to show that ape? Uh, competition. I got it up right now to you. He's, I'll he's... add it to the stream. Oh, I thought I had it on the stream. <clears throat> That's what I was talking about. It's like playing Sorry. cards with my brother's kids. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> it looks like PJ2T is doing, is doing really well there. Got that one. Yeah, there's. Uh, we're we're not sure if we're going to allow uh, club stations, um, which that is. Yeah. Um, and N0W is a, a special event station uh, that was put on by multiple locations, and uh, we we may drop them out of the uh, the leaderboard mm -hmm. listing, but. It's, it doesn't matter because down. everybody's in there. And um, I mean, there's what 1,600 and some odd pages of, uh, of score listings. And, yeah, it looks like there's um, quite a few participants in this thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I mean, I think we're, we're up close to uh, 2 million uh, QSOs already in total. So and, and it'll climb. It's, it's going to be huge. And, uh, but there are other functions you can get at um, the, uh, uh, of course, all the information about the event is available on the VOTA homepage, um, a leaderboard, as we just talked about, um, certificates, when they're available will be listed there. Um, and you'll be able to print out your own download that you qualify for. Cool. Download um, and print your own. That's right. That's cool. Um, and and it, the, the thing is, it's going to be as soon as you're eligible for it. So you don't have to send away and request it. If you're eligible, it'll let you print it and it'll print out nice on a, you know, whatever kind of paper you want. And um, of course the call sign points, um, that shows um, how much each type of appointment is worth uh, when you make contacts with people on the air. Um, people like the uh, president of the ARRL uh, Board of Directors, Rick Roderick, uh, K5UR, every contact with him is worth 300 points. Um, and, um, you know, the uh, uh, if you're just a member of the league, you're worth one point. If you're a life member, you're worth five points. Um, if you're a VE, you're worth five points. Um, oh, if, you're, if you're a member of the um, uh, various... Uh, clubs we have the uh, maxim and we have the um the other one which I, the name of is escaping me at the moment but um we uh, uh you're worth 25 points 
Um, and there's all sorts of other um, uh, volunteer appointments that are available that many people who um, are participating uh, in, in, in the, in the uh, affiliated clubs, um, volunteer examiners, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, they're all at various point levels from, from one to 300 per contact. So, um, uh, oh, and the thing is, if you um, decide to sign up and uh, get to a higher point level uh, during the year, all of your contacts you've made will go to the higher point level for everybody automatically whenever that happens. So um, whatever the, your, your highest point value is during the year will be the highest point value for anybody who works you through that year. So can it's, you, it's kind of cool. Can you stack points? So like I'm a VE no. and a member. So that would be no. six points. No, just five. This this is scoring. This is crazy enough as it is. Um, you know, if we were to allow <laughs> that, um, I, I, we, it would probably be July before the uh, leaderboard would function at all. You'd need a supercomputer to keep up with all that. Exactly. You know, if you think about it, you've got, you know, thousands and thousands of people making contacts continually and the scores just keep changing. And, uh, you know, this is all being kept track of in Logbook of the World. And um, what we do uh, in order to not bog down Logbook of the World is we take a snapshot of that database and make a copy of it, which we can do pretty quickly. And then we do all the uh, scoring off of that copy. And um, mm. so far, so good. It's uh, working well. So when I take a look at this, um, it, you, it is a log book of the world. And um, I think I do remember hearing something around performance issues originally. So many people were lo uh, uploading um, uh, contacts. But have you seen an increase in usage or more folks signing up for log book of the world just participating in, in the contest? Uh, well, yeah, there's there, there are a lot more people, but Logbook it's, itself is not uh, having any sort of a uh, performance issue. We did have a um, virtual uh, distributed denial of service oh. um, attack yeah. uh, right uh, on December 26th, um, you know, just as we all took a few days off for the end of the year and um, turned out that there is a uh, rogue uh, application um, that uh, decided to do some things it shouldn't. And uh, it took us a few days to figure out who was doing it. And we got that straightened out and that cleared that problem up. But aside from that, uh, uh, Logbook's been running very smoothly for um, well, quite a while now. So, um, you know, we're uh, knocking on wood uh, with, uh, it's an old system, but it's going to be updated and replaced uh, hopefully within the next year, maybe a little longer. But, well, it's uh, got to be quite an endeavor to uh, swap that out for something else. I, I, well, uh, I do remember hearing that there were plans to, to do some uh, updates to it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's actually um, uh, over time, you know, that, that, as I'm sure you guys are aware, um, computer uh, things in general have improved and gotten easier to do mm -hmm. on a large scale. And because of that, once we decide what we're going to do, making it happen is going to happen pretty quick. Um, the problem that we have and the thing that is kind of restraining some of that um, is the dogs barking in the background and then <laughs> um, having uh, basically what's a 20 year old, uh, old fashioned single user database model Mm -hmm. um, that, that was built on a machine that was at one time under a desk uh, here at, uh, you know, the headquarters building in yeah. Newington. And uh, uh, we might have discussed the logbook of the world hardware setup, software setup once or twice on here. Well, the thing is, this probably was a guy who was a ham, not a develop. You know, development right. probably wasn't his first job. He was probably his hobby and he put something together. That's yeah. how a lot of things start out. Right. Yeah. And uh, it's actually... Um, remarkable um, how well it works and it's very resilient um, we don't lose data ever 
Um, you know, I do. even if there's outages and power problems, uh, everything automatically keeps track of where it broke off and cues things back up and recovers. Um, and they really did a remarkable job, but it's not sufficient anymore. I got to say uh, the security, the security on LOTW is probably stronger than the security at my bank that is, because that they don't care if I log true. in from a different computer at my house, but LOTW throws a, a hissy fit. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, these contacts are serious business, Jim. I mean, Apparently you so. You know, Hand paper is like money, I guess. Well, I don't. well if, if you think about it, you know, this was 20, 25 years ago. Um, sure. And, and the thought at that time was uh, they had to guard against the unknown. And these methods were probably state of the art at that time. Yeah, right. And uh, no, that's no longer the case. Right. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that need to be modernized. And uh, the current uh, management team uh, at headquarters is focused on doing that and doing it correctly. So that's where we're headed. That's cool. great. Well, you, the, the league in general has had a lot of uh, updates and modernization of this, this the web platform in general. Like you had the, uh, the introduction of the learning network and I believe there's some updates to the homepage as well. So it's, uh, it's sure, good yeah. to see, it's good to see that stuff. Yeah, one of, one of the things that um, happened, uh, well, just a little less than a year ago, I guess, um, was uh, we converted uh, over to a, uh, a new uh, infrastructure uh, for operating the business. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of changes had to be made. And unfortunately, a lot of that could not be done ahead of time. So there was a bit of a, a disruption of normal uh, things for a week or two or three, I don't recall exactly, but um, we uh, we got through that and everything's working pretty well now. Um, and, uh, you know, it's uh, it's going smooth and uh, we're, uh, we're we're really doing very well. We've got a great team uh, in place and um, we're having a lot of fun. We got a lot of visitors coming in. Uh, that's that's the other thing. You know, if you guys ever make it up to Connecticut, you know, please uh, stop in, visit headquarters and go to W1AW and get on the air from over there from the real W1AW, which right. that's an instant pile up maker. And oh, that's on the bucket list, there, Bob. Bob, we have to dance now. <laughs> Throw up your hands. Come on, Bob. All right. There Close we go. Enough. There we go. He needs hey, Shane. some milk. That's hey, right, Shane. Shane. That's right. Finally, a ham radio show that talks about ham radio stuff. Well, I believe there was uh, also some changes around the way that you guys are serving up the content for the digital media for the different magazines and stuff like that as well. Um, I, I love I it. I love that being able has, to... That yeah. has changed a couple of times uh, over the years, but uh, I think they're still looking at a um, best way to do that. Um, and uh, so that may change as well. But if it does, it's going to improve. Yeah, I, I love it, though. Just yeah, being able to go out there and look at back issues is, yep. fan, is fantastic. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, it, it is. is. It's great. Yeah, you and search what you the, want, and you just get go right to it. And releasing the handbook in electronic form is mm -hmm. is just freaking awesome. Because I'm, I'm all about 86 in paper books. They just get in the way and take up space. And I like the paper books, i got to tell you. I know you do. It doesn't feel right for me to look at and be reading through books on the on the tablet I, or something like that it's a lot easier for me because it's not as that heavy and i don't get tired rolls over flipping those darn heavy pages and <laughs> well that's oh why you God, really son. need to have both yeah you know uh, because when you're in the rec in the recliner and uh, you know that that uh, heavy bound issue is uh, real comfortable and um the, you know when you when you want to do something or work on a project you get the electronic version and shoot out of three pages out of a printer and you work from that. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, something you're doing outside a project or whatever, you know, taking three sheets of paper outside instead of the book makes a whole lot of sense. And taking uh, out my iPad is a better plan. I'm just well, saying. Yeah. I, I, you I drop it. I don't right. Yeah. The, the, uh, uh, belt clip for my, uh, iPad, uh, on my tower belt, uh, they don't mate 
very well. So. Brings too many ladies into the yard. Is that the problem with the belt clip? That's what I have. It's just all the time. Right. <laughs> well, Where did um, you get that holster for your iPad, sir? Yeah, when I bought the antenna book, I got that, and it came with the option for the electronic media as well. And uh, I, I do admit that I'll use the electronic media to skim through and find a topic that I'm interested in reading, and then I'll go get the book and read from the read from the book. Yeah, I'm I'm over I'm over paper books. I could care less about ever having another paper book. Although I see some of the grumpy old men in the chat are all like, "Oh, I don't want no stinking iPad." Jim is a product of the new generation. He is a modern ham. Well, he yes. works in InfoSec, so I mean, I guess it, uh, yeah. it's a requirement Work. that you have well, to have a, everything. There's in PDF. a specific geezer on the West Coast that I'm looking at right now, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> and he admits it. Yup. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just over paper books because I can have a whole lot more books on my iPad than I can keep in my bookcase. So. Yeah. Can you get your romance novels? Uh, I don't read romance novels. Uh, <laughs> PDF format. He stars in romance novels. <laughs> right. They write them about me. Right. Protagonist and antagonist. Right. Well, this is an awkward silence. Okay. Well, what else Romantic. you got on your list over there, T.O.? My, my list was, to, let's get Bob on here, because I knew nothing about Voda, and Bob has been an amazing guest. Well, so I think uh, I think we need to go online and, and walk Jim through signing up because Jim said he was interested in signing up. Well, there you go, Jim. Sign up. Let's well, get you. Well, when you asked you me, I didn't. I didn't know, but I've been participating the whole time. Didn't even know what I was participating. Well, I've been so. participating because I make contacts with them voter people. I pick them out. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. I, I've been doing a lot of FT8 lately uh, during Horcash and um, <laughs> ten and twelve meters. 15 meters have just been lit, lit. Yep. I probably made 60 or 80 contacts yesterday during the day on 12 alone. But. Mm -hmm. well, that's yeah, FT8 is, uh, is changing everything. It is. And um, the, the thing that's amazing is that it's a global phenomenon. Mm -hmm. this, this is not only in the United States or Europe. It is all over Asia, in China, Indonesia. Um, there are Explore hundreds and cold thousands cold of, of people continuously making contacts uh, via FT8. Oh, yeah. Um, it's, it's incredible. And the um, uh, I, I don't know why they do it this way, but individual QSO uploads are perpetually going into logbook of the world somebody makes a contact boom send it in yep. another contact send it in and it and it, this is going on continuously uh, do you, you have know, any idea how many uh, how many um how many qso records are getting inserted into lotw per hour do you guys have a number on that oh any gosh. idea um well I, rough figures it's around i think 40 per second. So, um, you know, and there's the, the, the problem is, is that LOTW, because of its admittedly ancient design, um, shares its power with different functions. Uh, so it's not, it doesn't have 100% capability of doing only uploads. So it's, it's throttled back right. to somewhere around 40 QSOs per second. And uh, that's a pretty good average. Uh, sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's a little slower, but that's that's about what it is. That's 2,500 QSOs an hour. Ish. Yeah. Ish. Ish. That, that doesn't seem right. No, per minute. It seems low. No. Wait a second. Let me start over. You said 40 a second. Yeah. So 40 times 60, yeah, it was low. I missed a zero. That's 2,400 a minute Yeah. times 60 minutes. Yeah. There Bob's we go. Mass, 144 Bob's math better than your calculator. There you go. Uh, my, I shouldn't be <laughs> mathing on stream. That's what I'm Charles, saying. Charles, you should. You should have learned by now. I'm going to make your monitor light up in smoke or something. 144 mm -hmm. QSOs an hour. So that's, oh, that's pretty impressive. 144,000. Thousands, yeah. Yeah. God, it keeps getting. Yeah, and now, 
<laughs> we've got, um, I think it's um, one almost 1.68 billion in QSOs the in the database. Now, a year ago, it was about one and a half. So, um, you know, um, you guys can do the math on that. But no, it's growing. It's growing fast. <laughs> you saw that that just too. taxed my math abilities, son. I'm, no, we ain't doing that. So what's your backend database? I assume at this point it's got to be SQL. You ain't doing that in Access. Right. Not yeah. anymore. <laughs> no, Not I, I don't think it ever was. Enable? DBase 3? Fox Pro? I mean, it, that was advanced. It may have been one of those. Alpha 4. 20 some years ago. Right. Fox Pro is my favorite, Anthony. I especially like the color scheme that they chose. I don't remember. I used to use Fox Pro all the time. I, I've got no, It was like no, no, magenta and cyan and yellow. It was like, what why was did the they one that comes? Um, it was not What was pretty. the other one that was, was it RIM? That was a database program? RIM was Research in Motion, the BlackBerry folks, right? Nah, this was yes. before the BlackBerry. Yes. They, they used to have a database. Oh, man. I think it was RIM. I can't remember that one. There was also DBase 3. I coded a ton of crap for the Air Force in yeah. DBase 3 back in the 80s. Fox Pro is still alive and well in every Microsoft SQL server because that's that's why Microsoft bought Fox Pro. <laughs> right. It was for the, the Rushmore technology. <clears throat> right. It's good stuff. Yeah, this has been pretty uh, informative. <laughs> yeah, it, it has. has. It has. Well, I think we've so, run out of stuff to say about volunteers on the air. What do you guys think? It's getting uh, quiet here. I'm good with it. Th I think so, too. We have a – Ape has an awesome plan. Not we. Ape has an awesome plan for Saturday's show. You want yeah, to share that, that or is that top <clears throat> secret? Or top we can share that. I will uh, have it posted probably about a half hour after the show ends. Uh, I just got to go finish a couple things on it. But uh, we're going to talk about soldering irons and solder. Oh, and how to properly hold them. How to properly hold them and a whole bunch of other stuff too. But I think the thing's really going to be around helping guide folks make a determination as to which one they should get if they are going to buy a soldering iron um, and look oh, at a maybe. couple of different intended use cases. And not all soldering irons are, are created the same. They're not all equal, accessories right? too. Maybe <coughs> accessories. yeah, we yeah, have some accessories. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff there that I, I've that I probably still don't know that I've had to. I learn. got one of those. Bob. Flux. What is what the flux is that? It's right? a pot of gold. It's, a, it's, it's chemical magic. Spotter. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Cleaner. I, yes. But I didn't know that until like a year or so ago. And I've been soldering <laughs> junk all my life. But this is a Heiko 599B. Yeah, those things are great for, keep, for, keep, for keeping. That's all I you, use. You, you got to keep your tip clean. You got to keep it a more wet out. sponge. And I recently, that's right, I recently only learned that the sponge is not the answer to everything because I've been doing the wet sponge no. method forever. No, and every yeah, time I want to solder, I'm like, oh, crap, now i got to go get some water and do all that. And So yeah, I this, recently got the that this thing. This is like a, a Brillo pad-looking thing. Is that yeah, like that's, a, exactly, that's exactly yeah. what I use. Those, those, are, those are great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really Did you ever empty it out? Job. I have emptied it out. And it's a mess in there. When it, <laughs> it <is. laughs> yeah. but the thing is, they're cheap enough that you can uh, that you can just get a new one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I I bought a flux pen too. That's really cool. Don must have left, huh? Yeah, yeah Don bailed. Yeah. Don had call. gotten a phone call. Is what he uh, said. I, I've got a, a flux pen here. That's the one I have. have. Yep. Flux and flux remover. And you got to use these special bottles to make people scared. So there's a process with that. I've got the inject the injectable. I got that one. Yeah. But um, I don't or use flux remover. Turkey. We're we're giving Saturday show away, but I always just use like a uh, rubbing alcohol or something like that to to get it off. highest highest percentage you can get ninety or better. Well, my my granny shine. Uh, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> ethanol. Right. Ethanol. Isopropyl ethanol. <laughs> yeah. But I think that Bob, uh, you have been a fantastic guest. I appreciate you stopping by on well, uh, relatively short to. notice. Yeah, appreciate yeah, appreciate and, it, Bob. Uh, I'd uh, you know if we got you got some other topics you want to talk about, maybe get into music a little more. Um, you know, I'd like <laughs> that would to be a rat hole. Show of hands. Down. 
who's seen Black Sabbath? I have not. It has I have been not. Oh, damn it. Okay. Nin <laughs> nope. 1975. That's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, a, a little band uh, that I never heard of opened for them. And uh, they were pretty good once they started playing. Did a couple of songs that were pretty good. <laughs> One of them was Train Kept a Rolling. <laughs> oh snap! Aerosmith, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yep. yeah, I've seen Aerosmith a few times in concert. They're 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 uh, yep. they're good, I have they're never great. seen them. Have you Boy ever delusion. camped out overnight at the Ticketmaster to buy tickets? <laughs> no, negative. I not. I spent the night in front of the Sears in Kankakee. I take it back. I may in have Kankakee ape in Kankakee, the Sears. Yeah, because that's where uh, the Ticketmaster was at. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I take it back. I may I may have done that. Too. Because we, we said Mount Rushmore, and that immediately got me thinking of Rush. I love Rush. I oh, think yeah, they're, Rush they're, is great. They're fantastic. Oh, yeah. uh, I've seen them three times. So. Marvin uh, Marvin threw out Molly Hatchet, absolutely. Good band. And they did a have cover your, have your of Freebird. Rock and Roll Trivia. That's what that we should do is Rock great. and Roll Trivia. And, uh, okay. Next Thursday night. I think it's my show <laughs> next Thursday night. It'll be Rock <laughs> Trivia Night. Nice. One, yeah, one of the guys who uh, works for me, uh, open for the uh, Paul Burke, who's our uh, contest manager, and one SFE, <clears> um, <throat> is a ringer in rock and roll trivia. Used to be a DJ, and uh, he knows everything. Uh -oh. And uh, yeah, so um, if you guys do that, I'm going to have him on my, uh, uh, you know, uh, Your phone a friend. Phone a friend. <laughs> phone a friend. That's right. <laughs> He's my phone a friend. Yeah. We'll have to set some. We'll have to set some other saying. Get to Sean Cutsko on too. Oh yeah, X9X. Yeah, yeah. 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 KX Furious Emissions. Yeah, that's KX9X. Uh, yeah, KX9X. You're right. You're we, right. We might we might have to put together a production then. Scott mentioned Fog Hat. That's that's awesome. Fog oh, Hat Fog was Hat. great. Yeah, Hendrix. Of course. Jethro Beach? Tull. Uh, he's okay. The Beat Beach Purple. Boys. Absolutely. Oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Bachman Turner Overdrive. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, they were good too. Folks keep mentioning the Beach Boys. I'm not trying to make fun of the Beach Boys or anything like that, but uh, I got to no. tell you, I've never rocked out to them. No. Now, I have, a, I have a confession That's to make. you live in Nebraska, man. And I'm going to take some shit for this. <laughs> you got to live on the some coast. Shit for this. But I love ABBA. Well, you like every Spears album too. they ever put out, man. Never got to see them in concert, but they're awesome. So they, they, they want to know who your top three bass players are, Bob. Um, number one uh, would be um, the, uh, the, the king of, of Motown, James Jamerson, uh, of course. And uh, Lee Sklar, who uh, played with uh, James Taylor. Um, and, uh, and then Geezer. Who? Geezer Butler. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sabbath. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, four. What about Getty Lee? Yeah, well, of course, Getty Lee. But he's, yeah. he, he's, he's not just a bass player. <laughs> he's um, foot pedals and vocalist yeah. and all that he, other he's stuff. Just outstanding. Uh, but Mel Shacker from uh, Grand Funk Railroads, another mm -hmm. uh, incredible bass player. Oh, great band. Yeah, so Grand Funk is awesome. Favorites. Yep. Yep. They, they, they pr them and Bachman Turner are probably two of my favorite '70s classic rock songs. Taking care of business from BTO and sure. uh, and Grand Funk were an American band. I just friggin' love that song. I turn that up to eleven and rip the knob off every time it's on. Yeah. That's great. Inside looking out. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing when you hear them play that, um, you you recognize that there's only three guys playing. Yeah, it, it, it sounds like an orchestra. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm getting see. I'm getting the crap for ABBA, Dave. You deserve Dave, it. You stop it. You stop yeah. it. Well, you the do you ABBA have like one of those are right next suits? to the Sabbath, the Black Sabbath album? So shut did, up. Did you have like a terry cloth pantsuit that you would no. put on and prance around in when you were no. listening to ABBA? No. <laughs> no. It was a leisure suit. No, he just wore that all the time, not just when he was. Listening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrific. The Jeez. Guess Who was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bon Jovi, Andy yeah, Cowley yeah. mentioned Bon Jovi. I will, yes, absolutely. Bon Jovi's good. GNR. Yeah, I liked Bon Jovi. GNR has um, a song that I don't think it ever got a lot of airplay, but they have a version of Sympathy for the Devil that's just 
a thousand times better than the stones. The um, that was in the uh, opening scene of uh, Vampire, closing scene of Interview with a Vampire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And and so it, uh, it, it that song did pretty good if I remember correctly. Yeah, it was awesome. I thought it was. So we'll we'll track you down at uh, at Xenia and, and we'll continue the Xenia. conversation and we'll bring you on for I guess we have to plan a, a, a rock and roll trivia night now. And by we we'll, he we'll, means we'll, Tio and three Chuck. Of us. Yeah. <laughs> Because they do all the Jim work. and Ape aren't going to be there. Jim is right. going to be there. I'm going right. to come. I'm right. going to come. No matter how much snot Jim. is pouring from my nose. Hey, Tio's still at the airport. Pick him up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Victor <laughs> Wooten is right. Anthony knows. Yep. What about guitar players? Oh, top five lead Ed, guitar. Top three. Ed, lead Eddie guitar. Van Halen. Yes. Yes. I mean, it, the, the thing is, is that when people they say the mark of a good guitar player, and I, I don't know if MRD is still here, he's going to start freaking out. But is is playing? <laughs> oh, here he goes. Uh, is playing uh, eruption, right? So yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, I, I'm talking about human guitar players, not gods. Eddie is like a, he's like a level above. Well, he changed the way people played guitars, yes. right? Yeah. Eddie yeah. invented things. Yeah. I mean, him Stevie and Les Paul were like... Yeah, I went to the Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, somewhere yeah. around here, I got a picture of me next to the statue. It's probably from 20 years ago. I'll see if I can dig it up down in uh, Austin, Texas. But yeah, Stevie Ray, incredible guitarist. Yeah. Slash. Yeah. I put Slash yeah, up there. Yeah, he's good. Richie Sambora. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you can't really, uh, can't really argue that. Argue you, you know, uh, Slash is a tremendous musician. Mm -hmm. Um. He he doesn't do a lot of showing off. Brain BB um, King, Andy's right. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Um, now get into real music. Yeah. <laughs> Santana. Yeah, Carlos Santana. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no, he is a he's, Jimmy he's Page, great. Jeff Beck, Steve Lukather. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's episode of Ham Radio Clubhouse with uh, our special guest Bob. <laughs> Ron. And we talk about guitars and music and, and bass and all kinds of fantastic stuff. Hendrix. Even a little bit of drummers there. Well, I'm just, just giving the clubhouse okay. boys a hard time. Shane gets it. Shane's my friend over there. Kelly <laughs> Clarkson. HK, you right. high. <laughs> <laughs> Fellers, I'm going to hit the end button. It has been a fantastic show. We appreciate you all being here. And we will see Later you on. Saturday morning. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Y'all have a great evening. 73. 73, all. Okay.